Hello, hello, hello. I did watch hello. another intro and it didn't work. So we're live. <laughs> Is it I, Tigers? Um, no, Sherry. I was not doing my hair. Come on. What are you talking about? Nothing <laughs> to do with the hair. It was all Paul. All Paul with his sunglasses. That's what it was. How, uh, how well, is everyone? Hello, hello. Thanks for joining. Cleaning them. Yeah, exactly right. Here we go. He's it up. was me. It was all Bernie's oh, fault. I'll take. Right. I'll take the, the truth. The truth bomb. It, it's always me running on Bernie time. Always. But we're here always and we're live Bernie. and we've got always the amazing Bernie. Paul Cook yeah. along with Campbell and myself. And we did a episode yeah, about two years ago now, Paul. If not uh, longer, right when I was first starting out, it was one. Been doing youtube for a few months but uh you're only at a couple thousand i think right, back then where ago, i said yeah, yeah, now but uh now you're almost at fifty thousand. catching up to campbell uh, campbell's at sixty-seven thousand because youtube put him in the uh penalty box there for a couple months and didn't let <laughs> did we lose campbell campbell you look frozen are you there brother I see. <laughs> chairs, isn't it? Murphy's Law. Technical issues. We tried working them all out, and now we have a frozen Campbell. So while we wait for Campbell to get back, I'll try playing the intro that was supposed to play when we started. Be right back. Every city basically was a star city. It had these stars around them, but they were all walled, but also somatic shapes. These are the moats we're told, right? Because we're all taught that castles were, and, you know, were these square buildings with a moat. But when we can see them from above, there's these intricate cymatic patterns. And clearly you can see why we call them star forts, because they look like stars. So here's one in Portugal, one of the star forts, the huge amount of terraforming around it. Amazingly, this one is still in pretty much pristine condition compared to the destruction of most of the ones you find today. Piano notes. As you can see, these are all cymatic. A, A sharp, B, C, and they're all these cymatic shapes. These are cathedral windows, this fine here. These are, you know, rose windows or rolling cathedrals. And these are cymatic patterns, which are, which are created through um, frequency, so either harmonics or intention. Down here we have, this is our DNA. So these are fractals or cymatic patterns of our DNA. This is this is what we get when it's when it's good intention. We get these perfect, you know, geometrical shapes, and when it's bad intention, we get this goop. So this is like a polluted river, and this is like a clean river. And so if we tie this back to the cathedrals who, that have got these windows and they're connected to the ether with all these spires. And then what else do we have in cathedrals but these things called organs, right? I mean, have these things called organs in our body. And we just, the DNA, you know, um, cymatic is the same as, as some frequencies in these windows. So what this is all looking like is these are, these are you know, healing, healing factories, or, or not even healing, wellness, I guess, just to keep people well. They're pumping out, they're pumping out frequencies can literally Google any city of, of the old world from the 1600s and back and it will come up in these star fort shapes and every single one is like Venice and these canals everywhere. Those were the highways of the time, but they were also so, so much more with all of like this hidden technology, infrastructure and buried history. And you can see this one again, all of these big cathedrals in the, in the cities, but Here's one of the, the stars, right, or batteries attached into the wall. And there's even another one, one of these more sort of um, irregular shaped ones out here. But they always have these stars attached, you know, to these star cities. And again, the canals, and, you know, you can see this is a big island kind of thing as well. But the thing is with water, water's free energy. You know, you float a boat, you use the current, right? The current. You have the electricity just as much as it was the physical power and mechanical power that they used out of it what's to say that windmills and water wheels weren't actually generating hydroelectric and wind power 
a few hundred, five hundred years ago. This is a, a drawing. This is um, New York City, right? Um, Battery Park is because this is what was there. A, bat a battery. <laughs> I always forget that one ends uh, so abruptly. I need to get better at endings, don't I? <laughs> God, I know, right? Oh, yes, right. I froze, right? Of course. But I'm back. I'm back. I decided to drop it. Guess out. who's back? Back so again. Hello, everyone. Matt. Two <laughs> back Bounty again. Outside. 110 Have people it. watching right now. <laughs> There's a little All bit right, of an issue. Being here. Scheduling because we got uh, Paul in uh, Essex, United Kingdom, Campbell in Perth, Australia, and myself in uh alberta canada so 14 hours of difference with uh paul right smack in the middle at uh, 8 a.m or 9 a.m there for you now brother yeah, yes i, 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 I am the time. 8 a.m there you go 3 34 p.m here <laughs> where you are 1 a.m yeah 1 30 a.m then he got the short end it's okay. I'm a nocturnal. Nocturnal, and then Paul is a morning riser, and that's uh, probably why you're able to go on so many expeditions and explore all the places that you do. Um, everybody here probably already knows uh, Paul and his great work in his channel. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit of what you've been doing recently and the trips you've got uh, planned, Paul? Um, yeah, well, I've, I've decided to take it into my own hands recently and start going out and finding what's going out and going on outside. So I've been to, um, I've literally just been going around England at the moment because obviously the, the uh, all the shenanigans going on. But I've, with what I've learned so far from being in the community, I've took that knowledge and I've started going to certain areas and I've been discovering proper ancient sites, hidden sites. Uh, a lot of them are in nature reserves couple of inquiries and another thing that's another that's something else another thing i've been doing is um learning geopolymer that's another thing i've been doing uh i've actually brought some with me today you won't be able to see it at the minute this is what i've got left because i've been smashing it up and going through all sorts of tests with it but uh, this is the last this is i don't know the camera's crap but yeah uh, we were able to see it a bit it's got like a leaf imprint on it yeah look Yeah, so it's cement like no, no cement, no cement, cement at all, no cement at all. So, that's great. Want... No cement, so what lime or has it got lime? This in is it? calcium hydroxide, a uh, water glass, uh, calcium hydroxide, water glass, and sorry, mate, I've been up about an hour. Calcium hydroxide, water <laughs> glass. Oh, and granite. It's just them three things. It's just them three things. So it's, 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 it's as strong as concrete. It's not. It's this. No, no, this one's not as strong as granite uh, that you'd see at the, the pyramids. But this is extremely strong. Yeah. Like, uh, uh, you can't break this in your hand. This ain't gonna break. Crazy. But uh, if you put a hammer to it, it probably will break. The, 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 the first one I made, this one here, I've put it in this little bag, but it falls apart. That's why it's in the bag. Like you can break this apart, this one here. Okay, yeah. wow. So that that those okay. both are samples that you've made yourself. Yeah, with. yeah, yeah. But this one here is rock solid. No oh, pun. That is impressive. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that, was it granite uh, powder then, or sand that uh, you mixed in there? Is what you're saying with the? Uh, basically, you have to have a granite, but you have to have a binder, and you have to have the aggregates. The binder was the granite and, and the aggregates was the granite. But with the binder, it had to be pure granite dust. Like, And the way I did that, I literally just smashed it up with a hammer. And then um, I sieved it through. And then the bits that fell through the sieve, I put in my Nutribullet. And it come out like a, come out like talcum powder. And then I mixed that together and uh, added the aggregates and the water glass. And then I put it into the mold and I'll come out with this. That is but amazing. The thing is, this one was made about a month ago, and this has turned out to be so strong. But it's not 
granite. Like I'm an honest guy. It's not granite in 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 that in uh, Egypt, but it's very strong. And this is the one I made by mistake. I was just showing my friends. I was just pouring the ingredients in like nothing. And this come out the best one so far. Isn't that just the way it always works, though? Always, mate. And, and this here, if you can see this, this is just glass and calcium. This is just glass and shells. Stuck yeah. together like glue. And it is rock. This is down this no, nah, I've done the same sort of process. So, uh, calcium hydro, uh, calcium carbonate, which is the shells. I just broke them down and added that to water glass. That's all that is. And this is, you, 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 if you hit this with a hammer, it ain't gonna break. So what's, what's water glass? What's water so glass? this is just like a binder. This is just like a glass? binder glue together without without the, the stone in it. Which is uh, quite Campbell's interesting. Campbell's asking so what water exactly glass is water like glass is. Like now, water glass is sodium silicate. Okay, sodium silicate. Okay, so, so also powder like form, a right? sodium. No, it's not. Sorry, it's not powder form. Cam, it's water. It's glass. It's liquid. Oh, it's okay. liquid. Yeah, like so. Basically, it's, it's right. It's literally when it dries out, it when it cures, it's glass. You can smash it. So similar kind of to like the resin yeah. epoxy. No, 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 no. It's a completely different thing. Completely different no. thing. Water, it, glass and resin. Glass. Yeah, sodium silica, it, 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 I think when I looked into it, it is, it's made from sand, but it's put into a liquid form and it's clear liquid. Mm. And that, that's what I use. And that's, if you can see hard. here, I don't know if I'm going to The layer of glass yeah. here. Because where I put it in the mold, the glass went to the top naturally. Yeah. As you can see, the glass here. You got the shells in it. So, yeah. Did you get these recipes from an old book? No, I've got these recipes from a guy. Um, I'm not allowed to say his name, really. So we had just agreed to call him Mr. X. Um, uh, he's uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, uh, uh, no, 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 but his family member basically worked very high up, um, repairing geopolymer structures around the world for very high up people. Oh, wow, yeah, 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 so, yeah. Uh, an actual insider sort of access to the uh, what they're doing with it and. For those that don't know, a lot of the research that Paul has done is going and analyzing these ancient megalithic stones, blocks, and sites, and come to the determination that they're not necessarily bricks that were, or blocks that were carved and taken from quarries, but rather that it's a technology that was poured, assembled, and uh, molded, right? Like sculpted as opposed to. Uh, actually having to chop down a mountain carve it down carry it mm -hmm. and build it up it's uh it's similar ish to cement sort it's of right like it's not at all sense. cement but geopolymer is kind of like a similar like taking fine sand stuff mixing it with the liquid having it bond together and then solidify it's a chemical the reaction that's the difference it's a chemical mm -hmm. reaction that sets it off it cures it's the chemical reaction that makes it so hard that's what it is but going back to the yeah. quarry business, yeah. um, so, a lot of people that are against this um, say that uh, oh, well, the stones have been found to come from quarries, like say Egypt, and the, and, the, and the stone comes from Aswan. And they're saying it can't be geopolymer because the stones have been identified in Aswan. Well, the argument for that is it's common sense. You have to you have to break that stone down and then transport it. Do you get me? So it, that stone did mm. come from Aswan. It just got made down in, in, in the dust yeah, and then brought to where it needs to be, to be made, you know, to mold it. Yeah. Mm. And it, it just um, makes so much more yeah. sense because so many of like the cathedrals and like the columns, Corinthian columns, stuff like that, that we see that uh, look like they're made of this crazy marble and granite. And then you've shown, uh, we've looked at several videos, Campbell and I, where it's chipped off and then it's like brick or like a concrete yeah. or all sorts of other things underneath it. But it, yeah, it's all the, for signing, yeah. 
Like, yeah, it's just a, it's a front, it's a facade. It's, and the stuff you're talking about there is called scully over, yeah. and it it's an imitation of marble. That's the marble. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. And they use that on the pillars. And this yeah. is what we're learning it's, it's, is a lot of these places where we're going, how the hell do you get a piece of marble that big and that flat? It's because it's, it's not. It's just being, yeah. And how, you know, I mean, how do you how do you carve out a cylinder in a bit of marble? You know. Yeah, but we we believed exactly. it. So yeah, we did. Yeah, and this, but that's. That's also the mainstream narrative. They tell us that that's what it is, you know, because they can't tell us it's some kind of geopolymer, can they? Um, well, I've got you, documents. So have you come across the work of... Uh, sorry, sorry, have you come across the work of Dave... Is it David Davitas? Yes, I have. I have. Uh, and and yeah, son, uh, I think his yet? secretary reached out to me. She reached out to me and asked if I wanted to... Um, oh, wow, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think it was his secretary. She, she, oh, right. She's wrote... She's done books and wrote books with him. And um, she, when I'd done the Liquid yeah, Stones right. video, she reached out to me. And then when I'd done the Granite yeah. video, she reached out to me again. But um, it's just, I don't know. I just think, I don't know. I don't know. I just want to do it on my own, you know. I don't want to be involved with anyone else or anything like that. I'm not saying that David guy was reaching out through that woman. It was a woman reaching out to me. But she was connected to him. Yeah. Right, and... Uh, also, yeah, yeah, he's a legend. That guy's a legend. He is. But the geopolymer has mm. been around for donkey's yeah, years. Yeah. Like he's just the guy yeah, that exactly. is the he face of it now. Yeah, yeah and like he pretty I mean, much proved it. He, he he literally made massive blocks, didn't he, back in the nineties, and and um proved it. But you know, he just got ignored as usual. Yeah, but because mystery cell is, like is all these, all these walls. Yeah, mystery. So yeah, all these walls that again, like the mystery at um, like Sasky, what is it, Sasky, yeah, you know, Puma Punka and all these places that sexy ramen. walls that you know you can't put a human head between. Yeah, sexy woman. Um, that makes much more sense if that if that was some kind of jet polymer in like a Hessian sack that was, mm -hmm. and they were just laid right, and then the yeah. Hessian sack just wears away over time, and you get these perfect walls. And and how much less work is it? Then you know, so dragging much whole work. blocks up like the mountains. Yeah, it just don't make sense, does it? It don't yeah. make sense at all. The the official yeah. narrative and stories were just so impractical and made zero sense, and were they're impossible to replicate today. Even like how the heck you would get these megaton stones up to the top of like uh, the Andes and stuff like that. It it was just ridiculous. And at the same time, the geopolymer mm. technology you're illustrating and showing, Paul, it then makes possible and explains such like phenomena as the uh, Siberian mega maximum megaliths that were like uh, the giant walls that are all one piece essentially and stuff like that. It's and the same as Malta. Right? Exactly. Um, like, I got, is... I got I'm going, ba I'm going back there, mate. I'm going back there in a few months. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm going back there. You're I'm moving I'm back, going back there in February. Yeah. February, I'm going. That's amazing. All the stuff that I missed and all the stuff that I did, I couldn't work out because I weren't aware of it at the time. I'm going back over all of that. There's so much stuff. Like uh, a lot of the uh, stuff I was yeah. calling rock cut is it's all geopolymer, which is another thing. And like you said, Burn, about the yeah. massive, massive structures being poured in one piece the whole of the letter is like that mate you can see where it's been done in sections like one massive geopolymer structure so and all that stuff i need to go back mm. and film right so so many people also claim like the melting of stone but now you're proving and essentially putting forward evidence that uh some of if not most of what looks like melted could in fact or would in fact instead just be a type of geopolymer and explains the running of it yeah. and the, the different formations yeah. within yeah. the rocks. Yeah, that's it. Because obviously, um, yeah, exactly. depending on the um, the uh, the pH level of the rock or the stone, say if it say if it's an alkaline stone, it's an alkaline based stone, and you and you and you do acidic rain, it's going to melt. You get me? And vice versa. Yeah. So it's chemical yeah, reactions yeah. happening on the stones. So that's why you see like uh, that's why you see some sandstone structures that look like they're melted. It's because of the acidic. 
And it doesn't have to just be the rain. It could be other, other think... pollution. Other... Sorry, Cam, go on. So do you think any, I mean, no, no you're right. Um, we've got a little bit of a lag here. I mean, you talk a lot about, um, you know, them using the army to go in and do certain works. Do you think, because it looks like in a lot of the stuff you show, do you think that they've actually just gone out and, and just poured whatever, a geopolymer or cement over just over old structures? Because a lot of it looks like they just um, literally poured stuff right. and it's just run down and set. Yeah, I, I think it's all different all over the world in different places. But some of the earlier stuff that I know is, is geopolymer. Yeah. And then, and you'll notice that um, on top of that, like say, let's just say Malta, for instance, the earliest stuff in Malta is geopolymer. And then on top of that, you can see that something's been built on top yeah. of that around, I'm just guessing, around the 1500s. And then on top of that, you can see something that's been done in the 1800s. So you then, you, there you can see three levels of different yeah. stuff, but the earliest stuff is the geopolymer. The, but the, the second level of stuff above the, the geopolymer is blocks made out of the geopolymer. And then, and then the last lot of blocks is blocks so from the uh, quarry. Cut up here, so right. they're stone cut perfect blocks from the quarry. Yeah. So uh, that's so how that goes. Some of the yeah, oldest right. foundation, thus, like uh, it would the higher technology of like pre like, pre cataclysm was geopolymer, and then it seems like uh, the, it kind of got lost for a little bit, and then. Uh, it's coming back a little bit in like the secret restoration groups kind of, or does it seem like it was consistently used throughout all of history sort of thing? Like um, we see in the Bosnian pyramids, for instance, that the entire thing is advanced. Is there something wrong with your microphone? Cause it's all, uh, I can't hear it. I can't hear you, Ben. Ooh. Whoops. Oh. Yeah, yeah, all okay. I can hear is fuzziness, real bad fuzzy. How about now? You can't hear me no. either? Okay. It's very, very bad. Oh, no. Um, that might be... Can you? Do I sound all right to you, Bert? You sound like, yeah, a, you sound sound like robots. And I, can, I can just about barely hear you. No, no. Do I, do I sound better right. now or no? I'm going to screen record this. No, I think it's on Paul's end. end. Hmm. <laughs> So, Hello, Campbell, you can robot. hear me fine, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah. Gonna we, screen record this so you can Do see. Do you want this. to? Um... <laughs> There's no sound now. Um, we can hear you. Okay, we Am can I hear sounding us. Right now? Yeah, we can hear Paul. All right. Can you... Do you want to log out and then log back in, Paul? Do you want to like jump out and jump back in? Yeah, um, Paul, it might be on your end if you want to just leave and come back in and see if it sounds better. No, not at all. Yeah, and your speaker's up all the way, Paul. Well, while we figure this out, I'm going to play a clip of Paul's on the geopolymer. And all right, I've just sent him a message, so we'll see if we can get this sorted. We can hear Paul, all right? We can hear him dinging. I'm um, just a script. <laughs> I can't hear you guys. If you can hear me, I can't hear you guys. No, I'll send you a message. Can you see it? Um, Scaliola. Um, Scaliola. And sliced. These slices are applied over a base of brick, wood, or plaster. The slices are beaten into a base, flat mallet, gouging trail. Oh, we got so, Mirazzo Scaliola dates That's back to the better. 18th century and is often used for covering large flat areas. This process involves silk threads soaked in coloured dyes placed on a glass sheet over which wet pigmented plaster is placed. Veining is created by the threads being drawn through the plaster, leaving coloured trails that mimic marble veins. Once the plaster is partially set, it is transferred to the base by pressing the plate onto the wall leaving a smoother top surface than does traditional scaliola. The next stage is stopping, during which a slightly set gauge cement mix is brushed over the surface to fill in the holes and voids. As it dries, it is scraped off with a sharp edge wood scraper. This is repeated several times. Once the last stopping coat is fully hard, the final application is wiped off with a damp rag. The final step is polishing with a putty powder oxide of tin using rags and pure linseed oil, sometimes wax. The traditional finish is easy to maintain and will withstand gentle wear and tear. 
Right, so there you go. That was just uh, a little bit in detail about Scoliola and how you make it, how you repair right, I think it, he's popped out and what materials it was made of. So you find this in quite a lot of places. I've seen it yeah. everywhere. Now I know what I'm looking at. There is a lot of stuff that people are looking at, especially columns that look like marble. They're probably a scoliola. Again, without seeing it with my own eyes, but there's a lot of columns I've seen, especially when I was in um, Southampton and I was walking through the park. There's some columns on an ornate statue. And I was sitting there going to me, mate, like, how the blinking hell have they carved this marble and got it so perfect? You know, when I've got my hand on it, touching the thinking, bloody hell. <laughs> so oh, I got duped. We've all been duped. It's not that we've been duped. We just haven't been told. So that's all it is. That's all it is. What I want to do is just jump in quickly because there is a famous uh, statue, or they call it a carving, and it's like the one with the nets and the veil, and it's apparently done with Carrera marble or lunar marble to the Romans. It's a type of white or blue-grey marble popular for use in sculpture and building decor. It has been quarried since Roman times in the mountains just outside the city of Carrera in the province of Massa and Carrera, the northernmost tip of the modern-day Tuscany. But if you look at the sculptures, there's no veins in them. So that tells me that these were geopolymer. Because this is what marble from a quarry looks like. It's covered in veins. But you don't see it in these sculptures. So again, why lie? <laughs> but my questions are, why has this been hidden from us? Why, why And why has it continued to be kept within a certain community? That's what I don't understand. So this is a real skill. This is a real art. This is... This is no Mickey Mouse. Right, so I hope you find this interesting so far, because now we're going to talk about something called terrazzo. <laughs> and now terrazzo is a composite material poured in place or precast, which is used for floor and wall treatments. It consists of chips of marble, cool. Oh, and we're Robin. back, and Paul loves watching himself on video. Oh. Did you oh, want to uh, watch yeah. it a little bit more there? Or Do you I, know what? I thought, uh, I've never watched my videos ever. I'm just watching that. I was like, oh my God, that sounds terrible. I know. It's like when you have to edit, edit editing is just painful sometimes, isn't it? It's got to hear yourself. Yeah. Uh, Especially with my voice, man. Oh, <laughs> That's what I say. Right? Then it's people like... say they like my voice. Don't they? Who knows? I should talk in my speaking voice more often. Get those slow, low vibrations going. Yeah. All right. So, how is everyone? Um, I did have a question before it all went pear shaped. And what, what? Oh, well, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, just there with all the statues. So, I mean, poor. Obviously, you think they're poor. I mean, it makes a lot more sense, doesn't it, that these especially that fisherman one. I mean, and even just to set up the mould and to get that set up to pour is, I mean, that's just an amazing skill in itself, isn't it? Yeah, just, just definitely. Work, you know, to get that as a board statue. Um, yeah. But it's literally impossible. And, and it, is, it is impossible because there's actually carving, like, between the net and the person, isn't there? But there's not enough space to get any tools in to carve what's there. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's, it's clearly not carved. Yeah, and and like I said, going back to the veining of that statue, um, if you look at the marble, if you look at marble cut from a quarry, you've got the veins, and the veins are like the mm. the, the, the colouring in in the marble, right? And if you look at these statues, there's none of that in yeah. them, because it just tells you that it tells me, well, well, I'm guessing that that stone marble got broken down into dust, and then just like like this here, yeah. and just made into a into a mould, you know. That's what that's like to me, and yeah. and yeah, you can so get the it right. Would have come from that quarry. Yeah, the marble yeah. would have come from that quarry, broken down into dust, and then yeah. some chemicals would have been yeah. added to it, depending on the the uh, environment, because all these things go into it. Like, it has to, like depending on the environment where it is, like what attacks it, like the, the environment, the weather. So that all takes into consideration what sort of stone is going to go there. But it's mainly vernacular, um, local stone anyway. It is mainly local stone. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah, so I mean, yeah. <laughs> and, and we're starting to work all this out. I mean, there's no way that these, you know, people couldn't have known this, right? Yeah. <laughs> It, it, it's like it's just been kept in the, the higher, higher circles, you know. And us, us like uh, useless eaters, as I like to call us, um, who pay taxes, ain't meant to know this sort of stuff. You know, we're 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 we are literally, no. literally it's a different world. It's a different world between us and the people at the very top. And all that sort of information mm. has been put to us. Mm. Right, like open up the Vatican Library. What actually happened to the Library of Alexandria? Because I'm pretty sure everything is held underneath the Vatican. Uh, I would not be surprised. Mm. Probably, I probably sent a memo mm. out just before, didn't I? Oh, Clear just... it all out, and it was set on fire. But yeah, I reckon yeah, they definitely, well, definitely kept all that knowledge. Definitely kept all that knowledge. Mm, but it, it also shows us that all these, you know, deletes who have all these mansions and that, that's all a facade as well. You know, not full of solid marble chunks and all these amazingly carved. It's all just poured fronts and facades. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there's done, a way you can tell well. about with, when it with the uh, scoliola, there's a way you could tell if it's marble or not. And the way you can do that is by touching it. Because if it's the actual solid stone marble, that would be quite cold. It'd be quite cold. But the scoliola, I think, yeah, can be like room yes. temperature. And so that's one like, way to determine. And that is, that's why we get to the thickness, you know. Yeah, mm. feeling the thickness wow. of it compared to, well, but I guess, though, mm. it, it wraps thickness. pretty solid. Yeah, around. you wouldn't be able to because it'd be wrapped around a, a thing. You wouldn't see the thickness of it. Unless it was a slab. Mm. Like, unless you had a slab of it, then you could see the thickness. Yeah. But if you had a slab, it'd probably mm. be... It'd but the probably scoliola... Be Mm. Yeah, and scoliola wouldn't be that thick, would it? It's like a, just a coat. No, like scoliola is made up of powders and stuff like that, and, and fine parts of marble and, and quartz. And it's, it's all pushed cool. into different places, yeah, so, so you can actually thing. make the patterns yourself. And it's only about an inch or so thick, right? Oh, and right. that as a facade around what they use on the insides. Yeah, that's right. So it's just like a cover, basically, just a, a decorational cover. Or like uh, a decorational render, basically. Yeah. Just molds it, and like it makes so much more sense on the construction and how it was possible to construct these mega structures uh, in the ancient times. Um, I'll play here another clip uh, about Mal your mini Malta clip uh, that you just put up here, and then uh, we can talk <laughs> about that ball. because there's so many things that you have discovered in Malta, and I am just stoked that you are going back. Uh, I really want you to go into the uh, hypogeum, is it called there? The, the acoustic one that's uh, amplified yeah, but, sound. Yeah. But mm. have you heard the rumor or the legend that a school bus full of children disappeared there, and there was like the elongated headed uh, yep. people yep. that shrieked oh, or yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Gives the creeps. I've got but... a question too. Um, does malted milk come from Malta? Sorry? Does malted milk malted come milk? from Malta? I don't know, mate. I ain't got a clue. Malta, actually, actually, <laughs> the original name for Malta is Melita, and Melita means honey. So, Honey, it means. It sounds like honey. Wow. And and it's also a milk. So it's the land of milk and honey. Oh, my God. We've worked it out. <laughs> milk and honey. Land of honey. <laughs> yeah. So this right here is the uh, map of old uh, Malta, right? The Star Citadel and City and Main Park. Um mm -hmm. How big is the island compared to the rest of uh, this area? And how much of this area, in your opinion, uh, was the foundation geopolymer or from like the most advanced pre cataclysm society or age compared to the rest of it, do you suspect? All right. So, this, seg this segment that you're looking at now is literally probably about 1 15th of the island. And it's the capital, which is in the middle, the bit sticking down. 
and Floriana just above that, which is the city or the town there I lived. And on the right hand side of that is a place called Manuel Island, which is a star fault on an island. And on the left of that is the three cities, which is three massive star cities, basically. And going back to what I said to Cam earlier, when you walk around these places, the base of these are all poured geopolymer, massive megalithic structures. And then the next layer, and you can see when you walk along around there, you can see that it's all been chopped down, chopped down level. Like you can literally see it. And then on top of that, they've they've put the block work. And then on top of that one, you've got the most modern block work on top of that. But that star fault in the middle in Valletta, if you can see that middle one, that actually is so big that it goes through to the next town. And what they've done is they broke that star fault into two towns, which are uh, two, one city, which is Valletta, and then obviously Floriana above that. But And another thing about Valletta, that goes five stories deep till you're down at sea level. So you've got this massive limestone structure. And then on top of that, they built a city. But people don't realise that when you're standing in a city, that you've got five levels of, of like, it's literally five like a municipal of structure. Right, that's below, below you. That yeah, well, well you've got chambers, you've got doors, you've got dwellings. You've got, you've got everything down there, man. Do you do you think it was built pre-flood? Like, do you think that, like, what we're looking at is is a post-flood picture? Um, this this like picture is sixteen ninety four, I think. This map is sixteen ninety four, mm. right? And all them that, buildings. That's what they dated. You can it's with... like, could all of these like star maps that are from the sixteen fifteen hundreds? Is it possible they redated them and that they could actually be like? Uh, a couple right. thousand years older than instead of 500 yeah. sort of thing. Sure. Very good point, Bern. Right. Basically, mm -hmm. when I was doing my research in Malta and I was walking around, I come across a statue in, in Floriana of a guy who apparently built the Star Falls, right? And the guy is called something de Vilhena. I can't remember his first name. I just remember de Vilhena. And it says on his statue right underneath it, it says that this guy added to existing fortifications meaning and that was in the 1500s meaning that the stuff was already there yeah. right and like that, that's and what that, that's what it looked like and they've just put the extra walls on top and and yeah the, yeah the smaller houses and stuff yeah yeah but but, you show that the foundation is essentially the biggest build of all like that foundation is five stories deep essentially so that that if it was already documented as being there, that whatever was there is actually a massive prior rune, prior build, and that it's those other layers you're saying of uh, the blocks and then like the less blocks and then like the new stuff or whatnot that would have been from those ages. Yeah, that's right, mate. That's exactly it. I, I, I believe the blocks that are sitting on top of the geopolymer were the actual geopolymer but broken up and then made into molds so they could reshape the, uh, what, what goes on top of what they've cut down. That's what I reckon has happened. I, I, don't, I don't reckon they were originally like yeah. fortifications uh, for protection against cannons and stuff like that. Because when I was doing research before, there was a, there's a star city or star fort in India that's 4,000 years old. Now, the cannon was invented in the 13 or 1400s. <laughs> So right. you've got this bastion-looking thing yeah, that's 4,000 years old, the but there's no cannon important. around. The there's an identical one also like, in uh, Bahrain. They found, they dug out another star fort, identical star fort in Bahrain in uh, the Middle East there next to Saudi Arabia, UAE, that was also, I believe, 4,500 or Sweet. even older than that, that they dated it too, right? So really? it's like, oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Anything pre-1500 um, is against their narrative. They say it all started in the 1500s. That's when the first bastion forts were built um, by the Italians and French. Um, really? And I so didn't that's, know and that's, that. Yeah. And they're supposed to have only just done it until, until, yeah, until 1750, which is before Australia was discovered, apparently, and we've got star forts here. So that's another one, right? But, but definitely they're thousands of years beforehand, and that just destroys the narrative 
Well, we see this picture here that we're looking at. It sounds like they just went around and popped them all off. Sorry. That star fault on the left, the, the, these star faults are a lot older than, uh, mate, these, these star faults are, that I say they predate Egyptian stuff, especially on the left hand side. When you walk around there, it, it, like even the blocks that have blocked up the tunnels there, they are like ancient stones, you know? So these were blocked up a long time ago. Mm. And another thing about all these structures that you see, all around the outskirts of these are littered with entrances, as in dwellings. As in rooms, like you, you walk in like a little corridor, and there'll be like five or six rooms in that in that dwelling. Right, and so it, it makes me wonder that if all of these maps, the Star Fort maps, the Star City maps, uh, lots of them also seem like they have the I or the J in front of the six hundred or five hundred yeah. eight. And that it's like though that could literally be a millennium or a couple millennium represent a couple millennium prior to the actual 15 or 1600s and that these were pre the last reset or the last uh cataclysm uh sort of thing and then just re-inhabited right, and yeah. developed since then definitely mate yeah well there's so many problems with the dating systems and the different calendars and the whole 360 day to 365 day a year and how um, ancient cultures used to count in months not years and then some people interpret that as years and that's how we get these you know a king ruled for 50,000 years or something or well, not that long but you know so we've got so many problems with dating and and the maps I mean and the, and the main thing with maps is we've still got the wrong tropics on them they're not even for this age or the last age and like so who knows where they came from you know and we've got some that look like they are from the post or pre-flood world and some that look like they're just post-flood you know different sea levels to what we have well apparently to what we have now we don't actually know what the world looks like now though do we i mean that's really where we are we don't we, we, we can't confirm that any of this is more than just a drawing really one 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 thing I will say about these star forts in Malta in Star or the Star Cities is um, they're actually designed to be on the sea level that's there now, if, if that makes sense. Like yeah. the, um, so the bottom like the as base, well, like the bottom story. Yeah, yeah the, base the base of these yeah. star forts are at sea level. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so we're talking post post flood. Post, yeah. yeah or, or was there a flood? Flood, whatever. Yeah. 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 Good point. Yeah. Have you, you read point. the Oralinda book before? No, nah, no. Nah. The Oralinda book? In there it says nah, that know. they went around and it doesn't call them Star Force, but it said they went around and built, you know, cities and fortifications everywhere back sort of, I think it was 2000 BC-ish. Really? So I'm sure that, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm yeah, going to write a, that name down. It's a down. really interesting book. What's it called? Yeah, it, it gives the date of the book. Oralinda. Oralinda. Oh, pen. Would you be able to text one that talks about Friesland as well? Um, yeah. The yeah, Friesland. Yeah. So, so um, basically, the, it's it's the book of the 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 Frieslandian people, and they they came from yeah that island you know that keeps popping up and disappearing, which is either Friesland or Frisia. And they say that it sank and they all took off. And now there's a part of, um, uh, where is it? Den Denmark and Scandinavia, which is um, Friesland. Doggerland. Ah, Friesland, so, yeah, yeah. Friesland, yeah. So, that, so there's Friesland, there's PH, there's F, there's there's all the, and it's all different spellings, that, that, but it's all this. And, 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 and they're all, like, you know, tall white dudes. And then we have all these stories of these tall white dudes coming and bringing civilization and stuff. So pretty interesting. And then also that all of those maps that are like 500 plus years old, they seem to have these extra islands, these extra lands and whatnot in different areas. And also like the inhabitation of like the Siberian area, but also like the Sahara uh, desert seemed like it had lush jungle and life and civilization there, which then does bring up the question, were these maps redated 
from not necessarily like uh, 12,000 years, but maybe a couple thousand that some other smaller cataclysm or just changes have happened or wars, who, who knows what the heck, but at least like a minor to major reset since uh, all of this civilization and world existed. Yeah, but oh my. Where do all these maps come from? I mean, yeah, it's I'm interesting not, too that. that in the old maps, Iceland is, Iceland is called Island. Have you noticed that in the old maps? No, no, that's and, quite and interesting. It's always, it's always green, right? And it's called Island. And I often wonder, you know, like if civilization came out from the center, right, from Hyperborea, that might have been the first island that they hit, right? <laughs> now we have <laughs> yeah, islands everywhere. Yeah, that makes sense, isn't it? Well, yeah, I, I look. I, I come across a map yesterday that someone sent me, and it's called the Pi Map, the Pi Grid Map. Have you seen it? Or the Fire, the Fire Grid Map? I'm not sure if I have. Uh, is that the flat one with the the Flower of Life? No, no. it's basically. Oh God! Oh God! God! It is the most incredible map I've ever seen in my life, mate. And it, the, the guy was just showing me the, the part the of it on Britain. Grid. And it was literally showing you on these on these lines that weren't ley lines. These are other lines. They're called fire lines. And they're just straight lines. And on all these lines was everything. So on all these lines, you had all the stuff, like in straight lines going across the United Kingdom. You had stone circles. You had cathedrals, churches. And um, basically, there's about 10 different things on this list, on these lines. And you, it was just straight lines going through the U United Kingdom. I'll have to get hold of it and I'll have to do a video on it. But I need to learn more on it. I just thought you guys might have heard of it. The, the Pi Grid. Pi. No. P-H-I. So P-H-I? Yeah. Pi map? It's called the Phi Grid Map. Phi Greek Map. Grid. G-R-I-D. Got you. Yeah. All right. Phi Grid Map. Well, well, Campbell looks that up. I will oh, finally yeah. play okay. a bit of your multi. Um, I'm fine, is that? I don't know if you're going to be able to find it. I was looking this way. Sorry, I'm playing a quick right, clip man. here. Yeah, the camera looks for it. In all the old world out there, um, I wasn't aware of geopolymer, so I was calling everything rock cut. Uh, I kept the videos up because the footage is golden. It's, it's like it is exclusive footage. So I kept it up there, but what I've done is now I've took it down, and I've gone over the same footage again. With the new brain so this is that version with the new improved paul cook so let's go so what i want to point out now is this star fault in the background is actually part of a, a place called burgu cosmica the three cities and it's here right here exactly where the yellow arrow is that is exactly yeah. where i've dropped the pin and that's exactly what i'm looking at right now so the reason i'm showing you these is because these star faults or these cymatic patterns are riddled with apartments all on the outskirts of it so if you follow the perimeter of all of these star forts in malta or star cities they should be called star cities they will have all these entrances i'd say about 90 percent of them have been blocked up you can see and the building has been whatever that structure was has been chopped down and then they've used blocks and built on top of that look here we go so that was this this little bit here right and another thing about my videos, I actually go inside these places and explore inside these old world apartments. And it's just like being in Turkey or, or, or like in Cappadocia or Iran or Iraq or anywhere. It's all the same. This old world geopolymer stuff is the same all around the world. So I'm just going to show you another point now. So that what I'm going to do in this video is walk around the outskirts of Valletta. But I'm just showing you another part of that star city, the same star city, just another segment. And you will see that it's this geopolymer limestone riddled with all these entrances. 90% of them are blocked up. But like I said, in this video, I'll go into three of them and show you what they look like inside. And I used to live in Floriana. This is how I know this area like the back of my hand. So we're going to explore this actual area here. And it's going to be the bottom part here. All right. So we're going to start here. And I'm going to walk all the way along to down here. And there is where I'm going to show you stuff that you wouldn't even see if it was on holiday. And now I've exposed it in England, like everything that's been blocked up and hidden. 
like I'm going to show you these pictures now, stuff that I found in England. And it's identical to motor. Like I keep saying this, it's identical worldwide. But we've just done a good job at blocking things up, or well, the military have, not us. Because I, I believe all this was blocked up in the early 18, uh, early 1900s. But here we go. You can see sections. Now, this is a tunnel. Look at this. Look at the, what tool would do this. To me, it seems like the material would have to be like a bit pasty to get these sort of imprints. Ignore that. Like I said, this is from the old footage. But you can see scratch marks up here and you can see that this is this has been poured in sections so there would have been some wooden platform you could have walked up and you'd have been on another level but if we scroll down you can see the not the ground level but what we are calling now the new ground level i paused it there just to give a good reference of that's in Malta and that's part of the what would be the original structure then of the star fort and the original walls Paul yeah so basically the city is built on top of that basically uh, it's just so crazy and insane and that you can literally see there's doors and entrances there's of, five levels right? right like it five it's a five story like just rock building island city cave like ridiculous just it's it's insane what what is there and what it actually is it blows my mind every time and i, I just hope you don't get uh trapped in one of the tunnels on your way back but like no, definitely not mate like, definitely not be able to uh, live stream it the whole way, right? That's it. But the other thing, when I go back to Malterburn, I'm going to be so close oh, to uh, ditch. Egypt, Libya. Uh, I can go to Sicily. I can go to everywhere from there. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I get it. It's so close. Can you, wait, let's see like, this bit uh, here. Can I, uh, like, wait, what's happening? Uh, just an ad, sorry. Uh, uh, right, because there's there's something yeah. here that I missed, and I can show you guys now, which I thought was fascinating on that clip you're about to show. Stupid ads. There we go. So I'll let it play uh, with uh, it muted so that uh, we can talk. Over yeah, pause it. Pause it. Can, pause it. can you pause it there? Yep. Right. Is that paused? Yep. Can you see the geopolymer and then there's these squares that have been filled in with modern blocks? So here or here? Like So if you go down just um, above the wall, you got the you got the limestone and then you got the blocks in the middle. They blocked up these square entrances. Oh, I see right here and here. Yeah, yeah. I never noticed that before. Yeah, like that's like a perfect garage entrance, like tunnel Double. big enough for vehicles sort of thing. Yeah. Just but I never in... noticed them before. I just, when I, when I was going over my footage, I started noticing loads more stuff. Right. And like... hence, that's, that's why I need to go back out there because it's I've got a new eyes, new brain. And I need to go and I'm going to blow the internet up. Mate. I was stoked you're going back because like, when we first talked a couple of years ago, you were like, "I there's no way I'm ever going back to Malta. Like, you didn't think it was going to happen. Now you've got it actually in the works. So, like, you, you know where you're going to go and know what yeah. areas yeah. you want to check out and whatnot. They, it, it's just... Even this, uh, even this picture here, Bernie, yeah? You can see that it's been done in sections. These are megalithic blocks that have made this inside here right like even the ceiling you can see it's been done in sections which is just 
insane amount of construction that it, it means the whole uh, five stories of solid rock uh, material would have had to been built from the ground up basically when mm -hmm. it was originally done. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think that they've, they've got, they they put blocks down and then they put some, the same material smeared on the outside of it to make it look like one thing. Sometimes I think that's what they do. I think there's multiple different techniques that they use. Yeah, right? Like a, a fake facade on some of them. Yeah, but it would be the same material as the, as the block, so it just looks like a straight wall. Like, look at this. I know. Look at that. And... That's just like one little tiny clip and it's the entire, not just the main island, but then all the islands around it as well. Mm. Or the bays there, yeah, like. Just truly mind boggling. Uh, it, but that building down there, that building, if you can pause it, there's yep. a building when I pan down on the left in a minute. That's all one material. That's not made out of blocks. So that's either, well, that's, it's got to be a geopolymer structure, the whole thing of it. And if you look, there's no blocks in it at all. It's just one material. So when I pan down in a minute on the left-hand side, literally beneath me, you'll see it. And it's got windows, doors. Like that one right there? No, it's coming down. When it comes down, you'll see it. In a second. This one here, that building there. Yeah. Right. Like, That's no block work at all. That's just one bit. I was calling that cut out of stone, but it's obviously geopolymer. But it's got window frames in it and all that lot, door frames. And on the front of that, it's a completely different facade. It looks like a new building. Insane. Like, how? But you wouldn't cool. burn. You wouldn't burn. You wouldn't be able to see that unless you was hanging off where I was hanging. But I'm literally, I'm sitting on the edge of this massive starfoot wall, leaning over, looking over at that. Like, there's no way in this world, unless you had a drone, you'd be able to see that. Or where you, or unless you was where I was. Right, like... Proper like, hidden, mate. Proper hidden. How old it must be and how long this place has been continuously inhabited as well as all the other star city star citadel islands like this what you're showing it looks pretty identical similar to like all of like libya all of ancient egypt exactly well the same, mate. And europe burn it's not just that i'm finding the same in england as well mate exactly and uh you're gonna have to check out the island of jersey which uh it's closer to france in the channel there but it's still the uk and it seems like they have a pretty similar build and star citadel layout as Malta. Probably. Yeah, I checked it. I checked it the other day when you told me to. I had a look. It's mad. Just everywhere we look now, uh -huh. it's popping up. I've got a couple of pictures. I couldn't find much, but it looks like that that fire thing might be um something you can add on to Google Earth and like overlay. So I'm, we'll have to try that out. Yeah, uh, well, well, I've actually sent it to Bernie. Google the guy that sent it to okay. me, I've, set, um, I've, I've just forwarded it onto Bernie on WhatsApp so we can you can have a look at that later. Perfect. Yeah, Appreciate cool. That. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a WhatsApp too. I'm actually on WhatsApp now, so I'll send you a, a hello. All right, we can, done and I'll send you that book. So on screen yeah, yeah, here yeah. on the left side you can see all those bubbles within that block which again leads to evidence that that would have been port and geopolymer and liquid that solidified at yeah. one and not only that no not you no. Like, um the size of that stone that's the letter that we just looked at it's the same consistency all the way through you know, if, if that was a natural stone, there'd be in, there'd be different parts, different colours, and this is the same all the way through. And it also looks mm. like the consistency of a concrete. Right? Uh, yeah. So uh, you, you could, I mean, the thing with all this stuff, especially like the pyramids and that, you can tell that something's poured, can't you? I mean, do, do they 
you crush up the um the shells and that, don't you, when you're making geopolymer? So yeah, if if, if there's crushed up shells, shells inside as, a rock, a, know that that's man. Yeah, I only use the shells as an aggregate. The but yeah, just to pack yeah. out. Them, but but if they're in there and they're crushed up, then yeah, you know, yeah. But you see this a lot. You do yeah, see and, shells and that, you especially when I was in Nottingham. And I was looking at all the geopolymer up there. That they'd lose a lot of shells up there, shells and stones. Because yeah. where where some of the wall would erode, yeah. it would start showing you bits that are hanging out of the wall, and you think, flipping hell, where's that got there? And that's a good shot too. It shows the sort of that new cut brick they've put in there at the bottom of that doorway. Right, that's, that's exactly. Part of the, that the second they've... phase or third phase building. Yeah, they took smaller bricks. And it's actually they the polymer, to isn't it? that main yeah. structure, the ancient structure that's worn out now. Because you can see that they were mega brick blocks that were poured that have this porous material on it. Like there are several ton, if not more, uh, that make it up. And then it's eroded away. So it must be tens of thousands of years, probably. And then this is newer construction that they came and quarried part of it and turned it into these littler bricks. That exactly that. Exactly after. that. Mm. Yeah, it's crushed because that, that building material um, is secure. Yeah, yeah, I know. Look at this. Look, look, this is one of the places. The scrape mark. I, I, I know, I know, I know. Right, Sorry, like, you go. Look at how it's fractured there through the blocks. And that <laughs> through the blocks. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you think it's just being poured and then someone they just scraped it to look like blocks? I mean, that's what it looks like, right? Yeah, that's what I think. That's what I honestly think. Or the yeah, other the other suggestion is, if it's put yeah. into a foam, then on the inside of the foam there will be the the, the jigjag lines. That's the other su suggestion. Yeah, where they yeah, 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 might just be like a. Uh, and and that, um, that is purely yeah, because they rendered over that after. See, when when this this structure was in its prime, it wouldn't look like a limestone stone. It would it'd have been decorated. It'd have had terrazzo over it or some sort yeah. of marble. You know when they say the pyramids, the pyramids were covered in something, wouldn't they? I can't remember what they say now. Yeah, Granite yeah, or yeah. something, marble. Yeah, 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 well, this is not how they look. Now, this here is a massive geopolymer block. Do you see that? Just, yeah, just, yeah, I, just I sticking did, on the side like of the, the building. Yeah. And then rebuilt at a later date with uh, the bricks adding whatever had fallen off. Mm. Oh. And more ads. So. <laughs> and, and so like is, uh, some of the antiquitech that you've also found on your journeys such as the um uh mercury arc mercury, rectifier the mercury arc rectifier which yeah, i oh, showed this right. clip yeah, yeah. and the information that you put together on this to a lot of like my electrical engineer like highly techy way more smarter than i am when it comes to like physics and engineering aspects and it still blows their mind that they've never heard of anything such as this mercury arc rectifier and how well it works how efficient it is and that this technology is minimum at least 100 if not a couple hundred to thousands of years old most likely Mm. Well, yeah, it looks like some, some of them, like mercury. Um, the mercury arc rectifier, it's, it converts, I think, I can't remember the way around, it converts direct current into alternating current or the other way around. Yeah, it's DC to AC. And I oh, think that, that it actually can go back and forth both ways. And then the most impressive part is it, it doesn't destroy, I think, oh, I forget the actual term of it, but... Uh, the dipole or something like that, that uh, it doesn't wear out. It restabilizes. It resets. It resets every time, doesn't it? It keeps resetting. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was fascinating. Look, when I found it, I couldn't... I thought, do you know what I thought it was? I thought it was a light bulb for a disco when I found it. And when I put it online on my channel, when I first... I was like, what is this? And some guy went to me, Paul, that is an old world bit of tech and you need to go back and get the mercury out of it. And I thought, oh, God. 
Drake, it, it does look yeah. like a plasma ball. There was two of them in there as well, I mean, but one of them was Mercury out the other one. Yeah. I mean, why don't they let us have Mercury, man? It's I got to have some. Man. I mean, you know, it's got so many, you know, amazing but, kind uh, of properties. This, like it's yeah, supposed this, to be um, levitation as well, right? Yeah. So this is only that? a mini clip, though, Burn, of the actual main thing. Yeah, yeah. So, should I play this whole thing or should I bring up the uh, full video? I don't think this has got any words in it. This is just silent movie. Perfect. Then we can talk, <laughs> keep talking over it as we play. All so, right, we found right. these uh, right. two Mercury arc rectifiers in this abandoned cinema in Malta, correct? Yes, that's right. And one other thing, I'll say one other thing. It's in Malta. Yeah. So, this cinema. Um, yeah, oh, think, so this is your think, footage, is it? Yeah, this is my footage, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's in that cinema there, but the, the cinema oh, shut down 50 years ago. Right, like... And there's still stuff in there. Weight. Weight. So it's been yeah, well, there was a, there was a room at the very years. top, a film room at the top, and it had all the golden nuggets in it. It had the Mercury Art Rectifier in it, and it had the, the reels. It had a load of other old tech that I couldn't even describe. But you'll see it anyway. And that's in the middle I of the town, so, and it's probably yeah, also, also it's more um, less developed, shall we say, than where you know than yeah, definitely. It's places. just been left um, there, mate. And which mean exactly, yeah, because the more government you have, the more resources they have to go in and trash those places and rebuild them and get all the stuff out. So, if anyone's in those kind of areas, um, go and check out the old buildings. <laughs> yeah, definitely, hundred percent. Because you never know what sort of amazing store you're going to find. Allegedly. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, this is the thing. It was obviously everywhere. It was in machinery and stuff, but but then suddenly it started killing you. Well, uh, you know you know the old electric cars from the early 1900s? They needed mercury yeah, yeah. arc rectifiers yeah. on their chargers. They had to have the mercury arc rectifiers on the chargers. Really? The old electric cars. Yeah, so you know you've got the stands that when you've got people standing in the so, garage and they've got the stands charging the cars up, just behind them stands are the Mercury yeah, yeah, Arc rectifiers. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So okay. This is the, so yeah, this, this, sorry, mate. this diaper thing, how they keep switching, does, would that make the batteries last longer? I'm not sure. I'm Do not sure. Burn? Uh, I'm oh yeah, like it, it would make the system so much more efficient, and uh, like there's a reason they pretty much just erased this technology and using these and making mercury so dangerous and poisonous is because it is a superconducting super material that uh, clearly has been suppressed at, compared to where. It, used to be mass used everywhere it was like yeah. manufacturing mm. everything well they even used it as a receiver in the old tvs and radios and look at all this stuff what's all this Merc oh yeah 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 the little tubes of them because yeah. that's another thing it does is it amplified um like Radio frequency signal. or signal doesn't it yeah that's it we need we all need a bloody drop in our in our phones and they might work Satellite might become <laughs> real. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, there's red mercury on top of it all, right? Yeah, well, that's how I've come across red mercury. When I, when I was doing research on mercury before I took it out of this building, that's when I come across red mercury. Because I wanted to know if, like, I wanted to know the dangers. Like, like, I wanted to educate myself before I threw myself into something like that. I wanted to know, is it dangerous? Like... What to do, how to handle it, and Make all that sure. stuff. And I, that's not come across red mercury. For sure, right? It's like, uh, and definitely don't need to give yourself so uh, good, heavy metal really. poisoning. No, definitely not, man. No, but I mean, this is a thing. We're not even, you know, about to look into this stuff, are we? It's just mad. Oh. Uh -huh. 
Yes. Uh, was it? I guess in that clip you we're... didn't have it actually fired. The video of it actually fired up and whatnot, like you did in the longer one. So no, I'll no, try... no, no, no. That 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 there was just a little segment to get people to go over to the more bigger clip. <laughs> that was who that was. Exactly. A little teaser. Well, that's what you got to do. Yeah. Now, now I have to go load the full one because it's the goods. <laughs> But while I do that, we'll play the teaser from Power from the Kitchen Tap mini clip that you also just put out from, uh, you did a full oh. segment video on it as well. And I find this stuff so cool. fascinating, like where you found it and dug it up because it's the missing link in this DC technology and this like Antiquitech technology from that I'm discovering with like all of my uh alchemy research and like the uh baghdad batteries and the electrolysis this cold fusion style uh dc cold electrical technology that seems to be what the ancients used what uh the how they were harvesting atmospheric electricity as well and that it all ties in together and that it was these um Oh my goodness, what's it called that connects in the the generates the DC electricity? Uh it connected into the tap thing. Dynamo. Um, sorry? Dynamo. The dynamos, yes, the dynamo. Yes. And like what is this dynamo? And uh I definitely need my electrical engineer friends to look more into these dynamos because it I think it is also a crucial missing link into the free energy and the over unity devices. Yeah. Well, before you play this clip, Burn, can I explain something? A hundred percent. Right. So um, in, in that video you're about to watch, there was a, in certain areas in England, there was a high pressure network, meaning that, um, uh, for instance, there'd be a, a, a from source they'd be pumping water at a very high pressure and a network would pass into places like factories and things like that so you couldn't actually draw the water off of this network you couldn't you couldn't take the water out but the water would pass through certain parts in the building that you could attach the dynamo to and that water pressure would then spin the dynamo and that's how you got the power so you couldn't actually open a tap and get the water out of this pressure network the, the, the pipes would run through the buildings or the okay. factories and then you'd connect to that and that would spin. There'd be like a spindle spinning like that because obviously the water of the pressure is going... Mm -hmm. Right? So hydroelectric yeah. power that instead of being in a massive yeah, stand basically. was in the individual houses, units, yes. and factories. And yes. what you're saying is the amount of water pressure, the hydrologic pressure that were going into these factories, it oh wasn't God. water that you could use for flushing your toilet or out of the sink. It was blasting and it would have been to powering the dynamos. And exactly that. Exactly voltage that. Voltage power in the exactly site. That. Means that we're literally doing everything backwards because now the mm -hmm. biggest machines are the hydroelectric dams, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's and mad, isn't it? It's mad. The it really and the smallest machines, in, they try and put a grid into your house when the, the whole place used to be a grid. It's like yeah. everything's literally yeah. opposite to how it used to be. That's insane. But that's such uh -huh. cool tech. And then so, I mean, you can't tell me that 100 people haven't come up with that idea in the last 50 years. It's obviously just been cool. suppressed because that's so simple. It? it is. So simple. You, you see, you haven't got to keep paying for it, have you? It's just there. It just keeps, it's just on loop going round. You know, it's just. Uh, well, but, that's, but, that's, yeah, just. But it's free, free, right? Exactly. Whether it was from the atmosphere, whether it was from uh, the Baghdad battery, like your little chemical jar batteries, or whether it was from uh, hydroelectric or wind turbine, it's that it seems that uh, communities and households, farms, industry, that it was all electricity was just provided and generated on site as opposed yeah. to needing to source it out. To have exactly to pay for it to charge for it and all of that and that's where the hijack came yeah. Yeah. and 
Well, 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 Burn, I, I got a magazine from 19, 1913, mate, or 1911. And in that magazine, it's telling you it's a child's magazine. Well, not a child or kid, rather, a child. It's, uh, it's, a, it's aimed at teenagers, basically. And it's showing them how to make electricity at home mm. with household materials. Right, like uh, lemons, potatoes, or like with aluminum. Uh, foil, basically, they're making party. little Wim Hof, Wim Hof machines, little Wim Hof generators, uh, static oh, wow. electric, basically. And and it shows you how to make Leyden jars as well, where you can store the electricity. And it, it literally you used to make your own electricity wow. at home. I'm yeah. gonna need you to send me that one for sure. I'll send you the whole magazine. I've got about ten magazines, mate. I'll send you them. Yes, please. All PDF as well. Mm. perfect right oh, and that's, that's the amazing right thing now is all the sharing and technology and the web and connecting it's all coming out at once where it's just undeniable evidence of boof, everything we were told was a lie and now let's actually take this knowledge and be constructive with it and build and free ourselves as opposed to falling uh, for being an ant in the cog and being stuck in the grind. That's exactly it, mate. Yeah. Uh, what you can see now is actually a network of a hydraulic system or a high-pressure water system that runs through London, and you can see five or six pumping stations, which are the docks. Uh, these networks branch off to factories and residential buildings. Now, when I say there's electricity from the kitchen tap and everyone's going, oh, is it? It's, it's not. It's because it's connected to a hydraulic network. Okay, so that water will come into your house and it'll go straight back to the power network. Nothing to do with the waste of the property. Literally just connected to the hydraulic power network. So when you see all these little devices like dynamos and things like that, that's what they're connected to in the house. So let's have a look. So the water would either come into your cellar tap through high pressure, or it would come through one of these that have been built into the wall. So you just attach your dynamo to this, and then the high pressure water will spin the dynamo. Okay? So that's how these worked. You just attach the dynamo to the wall, and boom, there you go. Easy as that. Or like I said, go down to the cellar, get it out of there, high pressure water. So let's have a look at these turbines. These water turbines of an entirely new design are constructed to work from any household water tap. Both models are amply powerful enough to work dynamos, <coughs> small tools, fans, etc. <coughs> so the specification just tells you the size and all that jazz. Another thing that I found interesting, uh, they had a mains transformer. So it was for 200 to 250 volts alternating current mains, transforms down to 3, 5 or 8 volts. Bake-like case with enclosed connection sockets, suitable for working motors, bells and all electrical toys off the mains without the possibility of shock, complete with instructions. Mental. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> nice work what a flipping bit All of good right. that is incredible isn't it you've made some epic right. videos then, my friend. and yeah, so is that, that system still there or did they rip it out uh, I don't think it's still out, there you know? Cam, but when I did my video in London when I was underground on the catacombs uh, when I went on the boat I, and I was in them tunnels, I noticed yeah. some pipe work um, that must have been the high pressure network because it was just two pipes that were, um, were about three inches thick and it was the flow and return. And it, and, and it was going through these tunnels and it could have only have been part of the higher pressure network. It wasn't waste and it wasn't, and it wasn't mm. uh, like a mains either. So it could only have been the higher pressure. Yeah, right. Now, I've got footage of that, but um, yeah, right. it's so on a was... video. Sorry, mate. Go 
No, you're all right. I was just wondering. So that was probably like a newer tech that, and then further back you go, they would have got more and more advanced, I guess. Yeah. You know, if they're yeah. running those pipes through. Do you, do you think, did it have anything to do with the, um, you know, the fountain network? Because that was obviously another pressurised water sort of network, or the, the fountains we see everywhere. Yeah, I, I don't think that high pressure network was connected to I the really fountain. That, that, that high pressure network was a closed it system. Be, it, in, it was pressurized. Yeah, there, there's no, there's no open pressure. ends on it. So there's at least two systems down there that they had, two separate water systems, which is weird yeah, well, because then numbing in the building. Yeah, so you've got a waste system, which all your 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 waste goes somewhere, doesn't it? And that's been there. You've got the, the you've got the mains water, and then you've got the high pressure water, which which was the power for mm. uh, electrical dynamos and things like that. But this all went in the early 1900s. That's this all vanished insane. then. So I think World War One, World War Two were to, yeah. to to eradicate that stuff. It, it was definitely the reset, right? And yep. so the official story was the uh, what World War One started because three different cousins that were all kings had a disagreement, so everybody had to kill themselves. Is that like, the story? I've never looked into it, mate. That's incredible, right? Like uh, the English king and. Uh, the German Kaiser and the Russian Tsar were all like first cousins or something like that. And that, In uh, Yeah, and that it was a disagreement between them that triggered the war or some, something like that. And it's like, that sounds like an excuse for a reset. And yeah. literally, academia taught, like uh, for geology, that prior... Uh, the world wars, that everything was uh, catastrophism, that it was uh, these constant resets and uh, cataclysmic cycles that shaped and caused everything. And in history, that uh, there was Atlantis beforehand that was this uh, prior super technological civ civilization and golden age. And from that understanding and mindset, for the old uh, explorers and stuff when you're traveling the world and if you went to you know North America, South America, Africa, anywhere and you see these massive runes, well, it would have made sense. Oh, that was from the time that we had all this crazy technology and that uh, the ancients knew how and we're going to get there again because we used to have it instead of our current mindset of YOLO, we're the best ever, so <laughs> if we can't do it right now, nobody could do it, and it's impossible, oh, so it's stupidity. And that's how they've mm. been able to control the narrative and then indoctrinate uh, the flocks with their shepherds and the whole reset of it's only 2,000 years old, and if you don't do all of this, that you know, you're know you banished away to hell and not uh don't realize that so, your I mean, soul eternal you've probably been here several incarnations and in hundreds of thousands if not millions or eons mm. of ages old here but look at everything they're pushing now the whole you know the world's exploding because humans are evil i mean that now wouldn't work if everyone was taught about catastrophism would they like all the narratives yeah. wouldn't work and because they teach that everything's a straight line right the start and when it's not it's it's a, it's a circle or a spiral um so yeah buddy because you know um evolution evolution doesn't work with catastrophism right how does that work every time yeah, it just starts going a catastrophe it's it's again. It's it's again. Right? It doesn't work yeah. so it's well I, so everything I, I like, that's, that's a big thing yeah, yeah I, th I think that Darwin theory is getting taken out of um, the school books so because it's 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 just a load of cobblers, isn't it? This evolution stuff. Yeah, the, oh, I don't know. It's I just dumb. don't. I just don't. Think, I don't think we come from monkeys at all because there's not the bit in between, is there? You got monkeys here still, and then you got human, but no. where's the bit in between? Or Sasquatch is real mm. and. Uh, you know, they might be a lot smarter than us hiding, staying the heck away. But uh, <laughs> that, 
Oh, Definitely the Carolina. official story. Yeah, Paul has to explain that he's not a creep uh, being parked next to a playground <laughs> or something. For the what did he hear about being killed walking along the big side? <laughs> All right. Um, I do have some things of... I'll um, oh, out to go to the toilet. And stuff like that. Fair deal. Oh, oh. We thought it just started. Sorry rain. about that. That's all right. Uh, yeah. Out in nature and I. It's the best um, place uh, to yeah, be. Yeah, exactly, man. Yeah, well, I'm actually not in nature. Here. I'm in the concrete jungle. I was just like, I'm, I'm, I'm at, I'm literally, <laughs> I'm on a concrete, I'm first surrounded by concrete, mate. I'm not in nature. You're but in nature concrete cool. jungle. Yeah, okay. let, let me show you. Let me show you. I don't know. Oh, wow. Oh, there's a nice big Tartarian building in the background there, though. Yeah. Yeah, a bit of a, a, bit of a poo area, man. Not the best. Yeah. What's sad is I bet if you compared it to, like, old pictures from 100 years ago, there'd be nicer buildings than a couple of, like, the parking lots that are currently there, hey? Uh this place was beautiful, mate. If you look at the pictures, it I used to be. Happy kick down. Abby kicked him out. Mike of the says house. that Abby's kicked you out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not in the house because I'll tell you why I'm not in the house. Because I have children. Like, I live in a block of flats of 15 flats, right? And my my apartment is like on a communal part. So I have children up and down. Like, I've had arguments with these people so many times. But there's kids screaming and running up and down. They used to kick the football on my wall and all, but that's that stopped. But now they're just screaming, and I couldn't do this chat with them kicking or screaming or anything like that, mate. It'd just yeah. be a nightmare. So I've come to somewhere. I've just come to a yeah, car park right. in the middle of a bit of quiet. Well, that's no fun. That'd be horrible. Good thing you're going back to Malta, though. Yeah, I know, mate. I know. Oh, shit. So you're going back to live yet? You going for a holiday or are you going back to live? Oh, hang on. Did his phone run out of power? That's a strange frozen pig. It doesn't actually look like Paul from that angle, does it? It looks like someone's jumped into his body. No doubt. He said, he said, oh crap, just, just, just before he froze. So I'm wondering if he's, actually, you know, if his phone died, then he, we, we would have lost him. Don't know. Maybe a Received the call or something. All right, well. Paul will be right back. We will so, play another clip in the meantime, we'll I right guess. Back. Or Campbell, did you have clip. something to say? Right. Clip central. Um, I've got a couple of pictures you can look at. Um, of the Badlands. Oh, he's gone. He's completely gone now. Oh, Paul may be back. He may not be. Um, who knows? Maybe Abby was behind the car and she just went, what are you doing? It's been an hour and a half. <laughs> um, let me, I'll do, if I do that and go. Do, 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 do. Do, do, do. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. That looks like... So uh, this is on the ground in the Badlands. That's Medicine Hat Badlands. Or is that yeah, yeah, somehow... yeah. Really? I'd never seen it before. Medicine Hat, yeah, yeah, on the ground. Mm. Looks identical or very similar to the Drumheller mm. Badlands that I'm also going to be exploring soon uh, that has the world-famous... Tyrell Dinosaur Bone Museum in it. And <coughs> what? That looks like Look petrified Tree trees roots anyway. Yeah. Wow. Tree roots. Mike's in the chat. What do you reckon, Mike? What are we looking at here? Just amazing. And uh, I am even more stoked now that uh, we are... Uh, 
three weeks from now, I believe, I will be doing an expedition to the Medicine Hat Badland Guardian site. Uh, anyone out there that wants to join us, I'm going to be publishing all of the details within the next week for the meetup and uh, exploratory uh, two to three day mission and uh, adventure like that. Oh, man, just so fascinating and crazy and resembling what looks like extremely ancient ruins of past mega catastrophic cycles of either um comet or plasma catastrophe or some sort of high nu tech nuclear war uh, who knows what but that there's definitely mass amounts of what appear to be unnatural formations constantly in these every, anything that's designated as badlands they always have what these fairy chimneys what looks like the remnants of cherry chimney smoke stacks and buildings and right angles everywhere um, and what seem like artificial layers of both soil and construction and uh just terrain everywhere Mm. Well, this is one of those maps that we thought Paul was talking about. Maybe, maybe it's not. The I I anyway. Um, yeah, right. And, and you can see this flow, which, you know, sort of Paul was talking about that this could be geopolymer, maybe that, you know, through atmospheric change, it's, it's, yeah, run. Right. And then if there was a past cataclysm, or exposure of heat or energy of some sort, why what would have been the geopolymer um, solid chemical structure density of it then turns into this brittle, erodible sand, losing the bonding agent that kept that geopolymer together prior, right? Mm. And, and it's just everywhere, right? Like, look. Look at this, it's, it's everywhere. This has all got the same look. And from a geological so point, we'll it doesn't make topic. sense with the erosion of like, oh, the rocks on top, that's why it didn't erode down was that hard layer there. But it's like, well, if that hard layer was everywhere, why did it suddenly disappear in three quarters of the area and only remain in those specific areas that look like uh, ruins of buildings. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This is the, the old, yeah, like soft stone, hard stone thing and then the wind, right? <laughs> it's just something like this. I mean, it, yeah, that would tell us that, oh, well, this stuff that remains is just the harder material, right? And whatever was in between was softer and it just got blown away or washed away by water. And we get left with this, but that doesn't. I mean, come on. I mean, what is this? And it's got a tree growing in it, man. Right, like that definitely. And uh, this Stellium seven would love your opinion, Mike. And Mike, I will get your email if you're still watching right now. I will get your email from Campbell after this is done because I will do need to email you, good Stellium seven sir. And right, so where's this? Is this this is apparently, yeah, this was marked as, yeah, the Badlands. Um, in medicine, I don't know what the name was, but yeah, basically, with the medicine one, yeah, still in Alberta. Wow, so look at all these holes, like that definitely looks like rock a, in the middle castle structure made of geopolymer on the base mm. and then eroded at the top like look at that it looks like doors and windows like look at several look levels. at this see this it's not the best resolution but see how it looks like a big chunk's fallen out of here and it's now on uh -huh. the ground and to the left there those different that lines makes... like what looks like window cave sort of thing yeah. Mm, and over here, there's a few, and there's this kind of archway. 
So yeah, be um, we'll be expecting a documentary, right, man. But this is the whole kind of landscape, right? It's just so barren looking, and there's all these smashed. There's tons of smashed, like what we, you know, think is all this smashed up rock everywhere. It's just everywhere. But they've all got this look. It's all the same. This kind of weird melty look, isn't it? Right, and the, the geological layers right. too. Yeah, just a square full of right angles, uh, cave <laughs> block right there. Not Nothing out of the ordinary. Yeah. I don't know, nothing to see here. Oh, here's that map that I think um, Paul was talking about. So I think you can overlay this on Google, but this is all the ley lines. So, um, yeah, we'll have to get into sort of checking out where the stars and things are in comparison to different ley lines but there you go so it's a couple of pics whoops where are we so pretty interesting stuff out there um, and then also supposedly those big so, balls so are also there are the balls these guys are they have they got some there have they supposedly this picture is yeah yeah oh you've got a photo valley area that's okay i've got them too i didn't know they were from up there as well i mean what are they and um again mike do you think are these some kind of seed from like megalithic yep. trees right potentially because there's some that are cracked open aren't yeah. they and, and they've got like a smaller ball inside have those ones let me have a look and see what i've got them um Oops, sorry uh, this is the problem with having two computers, man. And for reference, this is confused. the uh, area uh, that we were just looking uh, at, the ground uh, pictures of, of the Medicine Hat Badland Guardians mm. and the area that I'm going to be going to exploring in the first weekend of October to verify uh, these ancient structures, monuments, and the geoglyphs around them. Yeah, have to definitely go to the medicine head face and see if there's a cave where its nostril should be. I think that that should be yeah. first on the agenda. Hmm. The, there's definitely going to be some sort of evidence, and yeah, look at that nostril right oh, there. It yeah. looks like there's an indentation in a cave, or maybe in the mouth, yeah. or possibly earlobe. This mouth guy looks. Like in the eye or uh, up top there on the helmet, there's a rectangle maybe could be. On the back there. Yeah. 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 Very, very interesting areas that- Oh, I'm very seen. amazing. Um, I have a feeling I had something else to show, but I have no idea what- Was what it the it was. Grand Canyon uh, Pyramid Complex or new no? something else? Oh, that's no, I may have forgotten to to get that. <laughs> um, how are we go for time? One third, we can have a quick look at Google Earth if you want. Um, uh, sure, why not? If you got hopefully, time. I messaged Paul. Hopefully, right. he's able to come back in. If not, uh, after the Google we'll play one last clip of Paul's and end it at the two hour mark. If but that sounds good. Or do you have that to get running sooner? Good. You're a busy man today, Mr. Campbell, aren't you? No, Don't you have another two interviews? I, I am. Yep, yep. I'm a busy man every day. <laughs> Lots to do. Um, okay, so let me share screen. So we are on the Earth of Googles. And what did you say? Jersey Island? Oh, right? uh, yeah. Jersey Island uh, for Paul to check out. It's Where's that? on the channel it's there. It's part of the UK, but it's closer to uh, the shores of France. All right. 
Oh, nice. Look at that. See that big star in the middle there? Oh, one of those exactly. funny shaped stars. Apparently, oh, some oh, of well, the As told, a couple of Europe's Sorry. oldest cathedrals are apparently on this island as well. Oh, definitely remnants wow, of the trial court the there. Off. Yeah, down there, yeah. Like everywhere, right? Here's more. Hear that? Just, you know, why not build it on a rock out near the ocean? Um... That's another one that's turned into a harbour. Oh, man. It's a big farming. Oh, is this, I guess, this is where, because is it Jersey cows? Is that what Jersey is famous for? There's a lot of farming going on out here in Jersey. Definitely. Oh, well, now where is the cathedral? You come in here, it should be in here somewhere, right? Cathedral, is that one? No, that's McDonald's, oh my God. Um, don't know where the cathedral is. That's pretty cool, I should put a marker there, shouldn't I? So that's, again, and that's just on an island, man. We find these stars on so many islands. And then if we come up here. Hello. Oh. Is that, is that it there? Yeah. I and just had the where... weirdest. Oh. Gamble? Are you there? You're cutting in and out. Yep. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry, I had to my, log back in from my phone. There was a weird power surge and cut and read. Uh, I, I don't know really? what the heck it was. Power went out for like two seconds and like reset everything and turned everything off in my entire house. Oh. Gosh, what is going on today? Yeah. Um, all been cut off today. Um, where's the grand hole? It's down here. Um, where are we? California here? Is this where it is? Grand Canyon. Grand Canyon? Um, the corner of Utah, California, Colorado, I think, like the Four Corners area, Arizona. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. We found it. That's the lot. That's the river. That 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 thing. So the story is: this river, this line going through it, eroded the whole canyon. The biggest hole in the world. Right, like it's it's just yeah. so ridiculous. How did it erode all of these square corners through it, and all of the canyons that are branched off of the main Colorado River through it. it. It just, it makes zero sense. It's, oh God, it's just like a massive badland, isn't it? Look at it, it's like this big scar of nothing living. Like, do, do you know whereabouts all the all the temples and stuff are? Um, oh, what's that? What is the area called? I, I I had it loaded on my computer before everything just shut off and restarted. <laughs> um, <laughs> there's like a main lookout point and camp, ranger camp, I think, that it's around. But uh, I couldn't tell you specifically it's on it. It's actually quite grand. 
Oh, that's great. What's that? Something's buzzing. That was Paul oh, messaging. That's the Grand so... Canyon. Oh, okay. So what do you reckon? And let's see if there's a fort in Guatemala. All right, I'm back with my computer so I can hear what Paul said. Oh. Okay, so here we are, Guatemala. Any star forts? Doesn't, does it? Well, that's a bit disappointing, Guatemala. Set up by uh, here. Oh, we still at burn? Or have you gone again? Yes, I am. Um, yeah, I just was uh, reading Paul's message and talking to him, and he apologizes that his phone died and that he won't be able to rejoin today. I did, but yeah. he absolutely enjoyed it all loves everybody here and wants to do a part two as soon as possible which i told him 100 percent we are going to get done i know but we're just starting to get into the interesting stuff bloody hell right that's what he Technology, said like, man. i Tech thought it was just getting good <laughs> man there's not many people living in the bahamas is there Right, this place. Like, it's just like this big what's going on here what the hell is that tidal area maybe nice water though but owens town still and would be nice so what if there's cheap land that in, maybe what is these the islands could have been man-made as well kind of like uh malta and the other ones at one point and then maybe some major waves came through or earthquakes or volcanoes or whatever it was tsunami that uh wiped a lot of it out uh a few hundred 500 years ago or a thousand when that last reset cataclysm cycle happened yeah i mean you can almost say this is almost you know like a like it would have been joined up right it's like it's the top of is that deep water? It's hard to work out what this picture is. Thanks, good. Well, no, that looks like very, very shallow. Purple. So it, it would have been one giant area. Shallow, yeah. So this would have been, so that would have been, yeah, exactly. This would have been one big landmass. And we're left with kind of these these outskirts. With, and most of them are built up. They've got all these um, star forts and things on them. Let's have a look. Exactly. Oh, it's a golf course. <laughs> so no doubt there used to be a star for there. Um, Indeed. Oh, come on. Where are they? That's what she's doing. What is, what is, what even is that? Is that just such a terrain? Oh. And how is it like these sand reefs, sort of like low island, even? How would that have uh, developed, you know, it, with the current geologic <laughs> uh, theory, you know, crustal displacement? It's like this, how would that have risen up and sustained the sand just above the water and whatnot? It, you'd think it just would have been washed away, essentially. Well, it's, it's interesting, isn't it, that, that wind over time can like wear down mountains and cliffs and rocks and that, but it can't blow, you know, a, a meter of sand off, off from an island. <laughs> exactly. Under their story, yeah, these all these islands should have been blown back into the ocean, right? Or slowly eroded away by the tides. You know, all these silly sort of stories we get. But when you look at what's actually out here, none of it makes sense. 
what is this place? Man, there's so much free land out here. I want to move to here. And the Rangers overall shape of it kind of uh, resembles and looks like uh, Tame or Medal, uh, right. the one we checked out before there. And what's this? There's the beach house. Yeah, this is one uh, house here. Oh, there's a few there, but but look at all these lines. There's nothing there. But look at all like, the lines. Yeah, it looks like the former layout of a city township yeah, for sure. Mass settlement that does. used to be there. Wasn't that? Here as well. Well, now there's an airport or something there, but I mean, it doesn't count for these lines. That's weird. Yeah. Well, I mean this would have been probably one massive island, right? Yeah. Indeed. And now they just get these little bits and pieces. And of course, I mean look at this picture we get from Google, man. Did they just say Atlantis? Oh, Antillas. <laughs> I mean, what's this? I mean, come on, this is not. It looks like someone's got a Crayola texture and just like done a border. <laughs> right? Doesn't it? It's just. Very and this, look at the pixelation in it. They put, they've like over pixelated. And down here we got, we're not allowed to look, but there's all these, you know, like these little massively bumps everywhere. covered right? up and smeared from what. Like used to be like is that the bimini road right there what's that massive thing and this is the north that side is... of cuba on right next to cuba there yeah so jamaica cuba there right on the side of cuba and then somewhere around and then cuba you here below it is that massive okay. pyramid no city too that was found i think that's on the uh northwest side in this blurred out area. like all sorts north. of ridiculous, strange stuff north, around there. Sort of north, northwest. Yeah, I believe it was so, around that area. Somewhere. See, there's all this strange stuff. And look at these. Look, look at, so that's that's a long way. That big line in the ground, isn't it? It's probably down here, I would think, the pyramid things. It's probably these. But of course, you know, I'm not, right. not allowed to look, right? So I wonder yeah. what they actually know, what they can say. Oh, the Cayman Island. It's quite documented, wow, Google Earth. And how come uh, removed and hit a bunch of the areas, the seafloors around this area scrubbing all of the ooh parts and underwater runes and look at this this is mad uh, this is apart from the fact is how come this one little tiny island is seriously populated and so half of the other ones just have no one there look what these man making canals surviving right on the uh edge of that massive massive uh trench and like deep cliff like deep ocean right below yeah, it right? like look at that how like that is a mass trench that's probably like a couple kilometers deep like and then yeah man it just, it just what, what's on the sense. side here that they've blanked out see that i mean look at this this is completely blanked out and not right? there but um why would you be making man-made canals when this is literally this is an island right they, they build canals so people can live on the water look how many spaces here for, for for waterfront properties that's just i don't know i find that weird because look they're everywhere they all these canals very strange stuff this is this is very strange and i mean yeah, you'd have to like ship a bloody digger out there to dig them. Thank you, BB. But it's very strange. So, there we go. I want to go to Ooh. all these places, man. Key West, isn't there a big road that goes out there? Oh, okay. There's a naval bay out there. 
Uh, BB donated five dollars. Um, Thank you so much. Good. And I uh, saying to oh, check thank out. Thank you very much. Ochakiv area of Ukraine. I found more of the star wall picking up around that area. So I will definitely save this and make sure. What that area? You. Uh, the, what area? Oh, Oshavkiv area. O C H A K I V or K I V. Sorry. Um, Ukraine was it? Yes, sir. Ukraine, oh, yeah, Oklavia, Mova, blah, 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 yeah, brilliant. All right. All right, is that the right area? Where are we? Yeah, yeah, that's in oh, Ukraine, yeah, that's right, 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 right around right, the right. Dnieper River. Yeah, so that'd be the start along the Black Sea. Amazing. So this would be the start of it. going up from this area somewhere so this is on the coast i i think that uh going north northeast from uh this area is where we'd probably find it going up um can we see any canals up here so this whole region it's, okay, it's probably a region that's taking me to a city, is it? <coughs> Excuse me. This area is what the... Is that? that is a tr probably a trench from the war right now in this whole area. This is the heart of the battleground. See all these lines under the ground? Yeah, those, those are most likely modern day trenches from the Russia Ukraine war. This this area is literally the front line. Ooh, thank you, Lady Locks, yeah, right. as well okay. for the twenty dollar donation. And uh, oh, Lady Locks was mentioning that she might have found the uh, the story behind this star fort wall. Look up for. Varangius trade route to the Greeks and that uh, she read a Greek story here that mentioned and described what sounded like a traveler trader going along the star fort wall or what we're calling the Great Wall of Tartaria but this would have been ancient Greek so that would have made it at least a couple to few thousand years old that this story would have been uh, recorded and uh documented this wall being several thousand years old minimum nice we'll save that name um uh absolutely taking pictures and thank you cj dv and mac pmg my pmg brother from project moon gold new zealand brother for another 20 dollar donation thank you everybody for oh my the god rolling in much appreciated now we can pay, paul, we can pay yeah, yeah, bill now. <laughs> much love paul thank you for joining us it's today and we will most certainly be doing a part two within the next week or two because i feel it got cut a little bit short and that was just awesome oh yes i mean i almost at the two hours and I wasn't being very successful there on Google Earth. Not one star felt. Oh, actually, we did find one, didn't we? In Jersey. Indeed. But we'll so saw we saw a couple adding, of other keep adding. So. We, we did see some other cool stuff. So 290 of you still watching. Thank you all so much for being spending some time with us. We will be back on Tuesday with our regular autodidactic alchemy show and um we will be back with paul um and that'll be probably whenever because we've got to do the old try try trying trying times that's what i'm going to call it trying times the trying times three time indeed. zones three different <laughs> sides of this round um, connecting at once indeed 
And um, thank you for everyone here yeah, for your super chats. Muchly appreciated. Um, and I'm going to be back in um, like two and a half hours for another live with Stuffed Beagle. And we're going to be doing some mud flooding. Um, we haven't had a look at, you know, a bit of a lot of good mud stuff, mud flood stuff for a while. So that should be a good show. So make sure you come and join, guys. Um, anything else you got there to say, Mr. Byrne? Very nice. Uh, yes, I've gotten a, a hold of Jared Booster as well. Uh, talking to him, emailed him ah, earlier nice. today. So we will be having Jared Booster on uh, an upcoming episode as well in the next couple of weeks. Okay. And uh, I will finally also uh, work things out to have Harry Hubbard on for our uh, Is North America Egypt Part 2 episode as well so there is a lot of things uh in the works coming up a lot of good episodes that uh That's we have so poor campbell just yes. it's never never yeah. ending and <laughs> uh my next episode uh, well, tomorrow i'm doing a, a, a <laughs> stream with some electrical engineering some really cool coil stuff and Saturday is the next APEC, and I will be doing the APEC stream all day long. And for I, it's my first APEC now that I have the honor of my own segment that I'm now uh, going to be presenting Low Energy Nuclear Reactions, mm -hmm. L-E-N-R, a.k.a. Cold wow. Fusion uh, topics and, well, basically my alchemy stuff, but also everybody else in the fields uh stories and progress and uh looking forward to that so ridiculousness oh, it never well. ends i love you it never all. ends but you know what would you do if it did end you'd just be sitting there bored so i mean come on gotta do something why not teach yourself and learn with us all Make sure you subscribe to uh, Paul exactly. Cook channel, Paul Cook 2, Autodidactic, Autodidactic 2, Spiral Up, Burn Eye, The Mind's Third Eye, A Science Guy, and Crypto Alchemist. And on that note, I guess we oh, got to do a Brucey <laughs> bonus uh, for the spirit of Paul. A bonus. And so quickly play. Brucey bonus. His three minute, uh, what are ley lines in three minutes video? Oh, five minutes. Uh, five more minutes. There you go. Here's your Brucey bonus. Was that good? <laughs> no, sorry, Paul. Andy, don't forget to subscribe. And don't Andy forget Tigers. to get the granny out of this video. This is ley lines in five minutes. We're winning the war. Cheers, Let's go. Right. right, the Earth's grid. The world grid, or the earth grid, is the theory that our ancestors purposely constructed their monuments on energy lines that when mapped and connected create a significant pattern, some sort of energy web. The whole idea of the world grid is that the earth is like a huge crystal where the energy flows around it and its nodules. Energy paths intersect and move all over the world. Ley lines are straight alignments drawn between various historical structures and prominent Judge landmarks. Sense. Love the to have you on, brother. In early 20th century Europe, with the ley line believers arguing that these alignments were recognised by ancient societies that deliberately erected structures on top of them. Since 1960, members of the Earth Mysteries movement and other esoteric traditions have commonly believed that such ley line democrat earth energies and serve as guides for alien spacecraft. Archaeologists and scientists regard ley lines as an example of pseudo archaeology and pseudo science. If it is pseudo archaeology, blink in Nora. What a good guess these cats have got, these ancestors, eh? I hope I've got their genetics because without no lasers and, and high tech stuff to do this stuff, how do you know where you're? putting foundations for these places. I mean, without the special equipment, you know, uh, how would you even know that there is energy on these spots? Now look at this map. This map, and it has the two lines that are going over it like squiggles, and where these points meet are the sacred sites. So I'm gonna follow 
St Mary and St Michael, and we're going to go to England. Let's have a little look what's on the sites. Stretching some 350 kilometres from the far west of Cornwall to the east coast of Norfolk, the Michael and Mary line is probably the most famous ley line in the world, also known as the St Michael Alignment. Some of Britain's most sacred sites are situated on this, as well as numerous megaliths and churches dedicated to the either St Michael or St George, the dragon slayers, and St Mary, the Christian Christianised earth goddess. See, now you know. That's our churches, or some of the churches got their names, and some of the monuments. So let's have a look at some monuments on top of these ley lines. Tor looks like a pyramid covered up. And also, if you look at Malvin, which ones a ley line runs from, they look like the pyramids of Giza covered in mud. But not only that, these lines are incorporated into streets in Washington. And obviously, if you look at churches, these symbols are all over churches, all over them. And with that being said, that just proves that churches were originally not designed for religious stuff. They were for energy purposes, healing or harvesting. I don't know, but I'm going to work it out. I mean, if you're not convinced now, all you've got to do is look at this map, look at Azores in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and then you've got to ask, why is there a pyramid built in the bottom of the ocean? Around seven years ago, in 2013, Portuguese new channels reported an interesting discovery. Supposedly, there's a huge underwater pyramid between the islands of Sa and Miguel and <coughs> Terequa in the Azores Islands. The underwater pyramid has a perfect shape and it's been faced by the cardinal spots, just like the Great Giza Pyramid, north, south, east, west. So it's very strange, but there's undeniable proof. All you have to do is download a map with the ley lines on, overlay it, but not even that, and just go along, follow the line and follow the monuments. I think it's incredible. And I think this is something that's completely hidden from us. These pyramids were generating energy or storing energy. The churches were healing us. It's all been taken away from us. Let me know what you think in the comments section. And try and do your own homework. Follow one of these lines. See what you can find on them. Because I guarantee you'll, you'll find monuments, megaliths and all sorts of stuff. You might even find something no one's ever found before. Anyway, anyway. That was ley lines in five minutes. I hope that give you a little understanding. One love, guys. Ta-da. Ta-da. All right. And Judge Spence, please, uh, I'd love to find out how to contact you and have you on one of our shows good sir as you are a youtube legend and and the work you do on uh detecting and predicting earthquakes is no like no other you are the world's best i would say and i could only imagine what yeah. you have found on google earth and other things over the years looking and uh investigating yeah, Micronesia, the Pentagon, uh, like Le Nan Madal was a Pentagon. There's probably a few more. Yeah. Um, mm. Please let me know how to contact you. Yeah, Dutch, yeah. definitely. Um, there's probably an email below here. If and if not, I'm sure Bernie's got one on his channel. So yeah, send us an email somewhere along the line, please. Type synth, and we'll get you on and have a chat. All right. Absolutely. Two hours and eight right. minutes. So I'm going to go and have a rest for an hour and a half and then I'll be back. Um, so thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Thanks, Paul. Um, we'll be back with Paul in a few weeks. We'll be back on Tuesday. We'll be back in an hour and a half. Bernie will be back on the weekend. Um, basically, we're never leaving, guys. You cannot get rid of us, even if you want we're to. Forever in the interwebs. So. so we're in the interwebs, we're in the ether. So thank you for joining us. Have an awesome day, and we'll talk to you all on the next upload. Bye for now. Bye.